Well, anyway, somebody that I first interviewed when I started in radio in 1987 is a syndicated radio host in his in his own right. Has written a, a fascinating book. I'm almost com finished reading it. It's up on our website, Hannity.com, and it's called Hypnotic States of Americans, a spiritual survival manual for every American family in a perilous world. Roy Masters is back with us. Uh, Roy, how are you? Good to talk to you again. Oh, it's so nice to see to talk to you after all these years, Sean. The last time I was on the air with you, I couldn't hold the telephone pole call <laughs> back. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, you know, you bet. I first heard you on the radio. It had to be in either the late seventies or eighties uh, on WMCA in New York, and you you did a weekend program that used to scare the living daylights out of me. <laughs> yeah, well, I was tough then. On I saw, I wrote that book forty years ago. And a long time before that, during the First World War, since you were talking about why people can't see why they're so addicted to this person or that person, especially wicked people like Adolf Hitler, I saw a demonstration of hypnosis on the Brighton Hippodrome. I spent my dollar, went in there, saw people do strange things, connected it to Hitler and uh, Stalin, and saw how he used hypnosis to mesmerize whole nations so that they thought that his ideas were their ideas, and that's how it works. Even in families, it turns families into battlegrounds. Well, and, uh, let, me, let me ask you and focus you here, because I want to get into all of this, because it's pretty fascinating to me how the mind works. And I watch and I observe and I interview people, Roy, and I debate people on the left. And in spite of all the evidence that is as plain as the, the nose on the end of their face. Ah, uh, yes. yes, right, they, they yes. Can't, and you write at the very beginning of the book, America's asleep. But what kind of sleep could keep us walking around half awake. And then you, this is where you get into hypnosis. Those people that I just played for you literally thought they elected their, their, their savior. And they still well, defend him today. Why? There, there's, there's, it begins with, uh, as it happened in Germany, with um, uh, how authoritarian the Germans are with their children, so not allowing them some, to have their own mind. So when you are born into a family, especially of a family who've been to uh, the uh, government schools and government colleges and listened to the media and sort of thing, with, had control over us for a long time before, you know, you came along with, um, you know, with your Fox News and we came along with um, uh, the uh, uh, talk show. Host, uh, well, talk, talk radio, Fox News, yeah. the Internet. I didn't know if I could bring that up. I didn't know yeah. if I could bring that up. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, you can. Yeah. So, Talk Radio Network, which I'm on, and my son's the CEO over that. So, anyway, but I learned over, I'm 83 years old, and when I was a little boy, I saw that, and I connected it to the fact that I lost all my relatives in the Holocaust, and they died. And you couldn't go to Russia because they kill you there because the same thing was happening there. You couldn't go back to Germany. You couldn't rush anywhere in Europe because they'd kill you because you didn't think like they thought. And this is what's happening to America right now. And he literally um, intimidated everybody to fall into submission. In other words, they couldn't speak their voice. What we have as equivalent is political correctness and when you have political correctness you are suppressed your voice is suppressed so religion or politics is shoved down your throat and once that it becomes established once you can assert yourself with emotional authority because emotion is a uh, hypnotic is of an emotional pressure and if you, when you start to respond to that pressure your if i may use the word monkey brain you've got two brains you you've got a monkey brain which is very suggestible but then you have a soul that when you get upset, your consciousness, which is the regulating agency between you and God that influences the way you do things, gets reversed. When you get upset and intimidated, as you see the left uses intimidation to, to upset people and disturb people because they can't fight back and it imitates the authoritarian aspect of your parents, of your schools, of the bullies everywhere. So we become... Uh, a nation of people becoming more and more bullied by media, more and more bullied by going to universities and sitting there for well, eight well, hours a day a being bullied. When, when the president of the United States, for example, Paul Ryan, who I happen to like, you know, the country's going bankrupt. Anybody that can do simple accounting or simple math can see that that's happening. Uh, so the the country's going bankrupt, and and the president. So we have one guy, Paul Ryan, the Republicans come into power uh, in a historic election. And so he proposes $6.2 trillion in cuts. 
And yes. and he tells everybody, if you're over, if you're 55 or older, Medicare is going to st stay the exact same. But otherwise, if we don't save it now, future generations won't have anything. So, and then the president says, well, you know, characterize it with a right. lie. The lie is, Republicans want children with autism and Down syndrome and old people to fend for themselves. Now, that's a lie. It's just well, not but true. Of course is it that is. the intimidation you're talking about? Yeah. Intimidation reverses. Listen carefully, Joe. Uh, this is not easy to say in just a few moments, so bear with me. Um, when you are uh, overcome by, see, there's something about the unspoken word in your heart. You know what that is, Sean. You've got, you have common sense. And this common sense should be the order of your life. So in the manner of speaking, if I can bring God into it, God gives you common sense. And, but the, the, the common sense is wordless. The trouble is you're born into a word, a word world where authority speaks to you as little children and, and makes you doubt what you know is right in your heart. That reverses the order of how you will grow up to be all your life. You're either going to grow up to be one who obeys authority and goes along to get along. But when you become part of the order of the multitudes like it was in Germany, then only a small number of people can yell and scream and accuse you. And the tendency is for you to overreact and take into heart and, and so that the, the spoken word tends to rule the unspoken word of your heart. And when that happens, you don't have a life of your own and you're reduced to only two ways of living. Either you go along to get along for peace, but there is no peace. That will affect the whole nation. When the whole nation is uh, going along to get along, then the enemy begins to see that we are weak people going along to the strongest intimidator. Well, me, and, so, yeah, and, and then or you become the bully, one of the two, but you only have two choices all your life. But let me, let me see if I can hone in on this a little bit, because I think okay. this is pretty deep what you're saying. It's but, very important. Because if you see, a, and I even notice this in my own life, in my own mind, in my own thinking, and I think everybody does this, but you, know, you find yourself in these sort of uh, moments where you're just lost in your mind and you have this repetitive thought cycle. Uh, Beautiful. Because, all right, no, 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 but it's true. I mean, and all of a sudden you, you open your eyes and you say, you know, I've been sitting outside in a beautiful, you know, environment, but I haven't noticed it for 20 seconds because I'm lost in my head. And, and I'm just wondering to that extent, you know, or you turn on the TV and the President of the United States is propagandizing you, or, for example, you're using the, the analogy of a, a bully um, and a weakling, and, and the, the bully's out there bullying, and that person gets all frightened and afraid, et cetera. You're saying that as a country, this is happening to us. You, exactly. Are you, are you sort of describing like old Soviet style? Exactly. We're all becoming that way, and we're doing it to each other. So let's give you an example. A, a man has a bad uh, a fight with his wife, and so yeah, was probably he goes to work, yeah, go and ahead. he goes to work, well. and he's beaten. He goes along to get along. He thinks there's peace, but when you go along to appease, there is no peace. You're actually giving power to the adversary in this case is his wife or it could be a man of course but whoever is the strongest force in the home that person will cause the other person to be subservient and even though they're strong they are strong in different ways they will give in for the peace because they don't want to lose their family don't want to lose the, their fortune they will turn around and take it out on the on the on the on the foreman the foreman takes it out on the employee the poor employee takes it out on the children, the children take it out, and the smaller children, the little kid pulls wings out of butterflies, but we have a whole system of people doing that. Everybody knows about being frustrated and, to, and being yelled at by a parent and being yelled at by a teacher, and the teachers allow the bullies, and it becomes a system where you can manipulate bullies and, 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 and make virtues out of bullies and make a media full of bullies. And, to the, and when they have a media full of bullies, you can't fight back. Like let me, you let can't me see, fight let, back your parents. Let me go back to my original question. Okay. The, because I played these tapes. People literally, the economy in this country is falling apart. It is. All right. The, this president has failed based on every measure. But it doesn't look like he's failed because his well, lies are stronger. All right. But, but here's the point. And you still have people defending it. And this, yes. you, you have, you know, all these liberal talking head, you know, propagandists out there repeating and regurgitating every point he makes. So my point is, are you saying that they don't have the capacity that those I'm people are under that. like a spell? Yes. All right, In other words, tie that into when you used to be a hypnotist. Well, see, I have learned you can actually go to 
you can go to Hypnotic States of America and you can see a demonstration before 500 people of me showing exactly in minutes how you could convert a perfectly normal person into a person that will defend everything that's wrong and everything I've said to that person, he will do. He will change his shoes around. And no matter how much I tell him, but I made you do it. Remember I told you I made you do it before you came up? He says, yes. I said, why do you do it? It's because I, they felt uncomfortable. These people, once a person gets reversed, once a person doubts, this is original sin stuff, when a, once a person doubts what he knows is right by the power of the spoken word, he believes the lie instead of the truth, and he tends to build an identity from that lie. And the more he, he is, lives in that environment where lies are truth and truth are lies, and is rewarded for it, like in government, you see, to that degree, his life is built upon it, and, he's, he's, and he has power to hurt other people, and he becomes so intractable that when you talk to that person who's lost in his head, you see, with reason, he will defend that reason. Everybody who ever makes an excuse is really proof. When you make an excuse, it's proof that some other force has acted through you, but you believe those truths to be your own ideas. Let me ask you this. Yeah. How, because I, I'm, I've been reading this book, and I'm almost done. And you talk yes. about awareness versus the trance-like state, the repetitive regurgitation, recycling, you're lost yes. in your head thing. All right. So my question to you is, is, you know, I look around at people. A lot of people lost in their head. A lot of people are screwed up. And all half the country, a third of the country are intractable, and they're dangerous. All right. So my question is, what is, what is the future for the country? The, 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 the future is this. To make it very simple, because I don't know how much time we have here, but I can give you a great example of myself, if you don't mind being me big bag of Joseph. Um, I've seen, I was in the war, and I saw my, my, my um, relatives being murdered. I heard about them, and they were annihilated. And I wondered, how does one person produce a whole nation of sheep who will allow a pe uh, Jewish people or any group of people to be burned in the crematoriums? I wondered and wondered and wondered, and as I grew, I became more and more interested. I was in the military. I got lots of practice in the military, to lots of subjects, and I went on to, I, had, I was a journeyman diamond cutter. I went to Africa, went to America. I learned all these things, and then I spent seven years in the Institute of Hypnosis. Uh, uh, and then I learned the secret, and the secret is this, Sean that every human being on earth comes into a world of dysfunctional families to varying degrees. And the more you can make it the parents this dysfunctional, and the more you can send your kids to school, and, and, um, and those, those teachers, those children who grow up to be subservient and um, subservient and go along to get along types, they become rewarded. Like in a family, mm -hmm. they get rewarded, the, the bad ones, uh, so what happens, we only have about a minute left, so what happens to the country? What happens to the country is there's a system where the people will always be attracted to the worst kind of people who reinforce their implanted identity. And so the secret is to learn to get people to come back to their, that which where they were born, the common sense, uh, can, common sense uh, virtues of sovereignty. If we do not return to this common sense, godlike sense of virtue that comes through that, then the, 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 those who are anti-religious, those who want to conquer us, mm -hmm. those voices will outshout our common sense and we will be subjected to one to another. You're, you're basically saying return to our first principles. We've got to return to those first, but not because some preacher teaches us, because only right. because there's a technique of separating the entanglement of a consciousness with the unconscious because when the consciousness is entangled with the unconscious emotionally it's a hypnotic state a hypnotic mm. state is one of shock that converts you your relationship from god to the the spoken word of the bitch and the son of a bitch I thought, uh, maybe on that note we should end it but i really enjoyed the book and uh, roy it's good to hear your voice again hypnotic states of americans uh... and we put it up on our website hannity.com uh, Roy, really appreciate it, and he's on radio stations around the country, and uh, we always uh, uh, really appreciate your time and insight. Thank you for being with us. You're welcome. All right, quick break. We'll come back. 800-941-SHAWN, our toll-free number.